there is this bug in draft.js uh, that, how should I describe this? Basically, the, the support in draft.js for copy pasting between draft.js editors is quite, quite terrible. Um, there is a lot of content that gets changed while between the, between the copy and the paste. Um, so we've been wanting to fix this for, for Wagtail for, for quite a while. And um, I made a page, Patreon campaign, campaign to support me do this type of work. And um, out of the, all, of the, all of the things I was proposing as things to work on as part of this campaign, this was one of, one of the most popular. Um, so I thought it would be good to stream that in particular. And um, the, this fix, particular fix makes quite a big difference. Um, in how easy it is to use the editor and in how reliable it is. So I think it's really worth shipping this to Wagtail as soon as possible. Um, so I'll quickly quickly stream some of that and then probably stop there um, in say half an hour. Um, I'm really hoping I can ship this um, to Wagtail, not, not in the next half an hour, but at least finish testing it and make sure it works. Um, but we'll see how far, I, how far we go. Um, so this project is separate from Draftail, it's called Draft.js Conductor and it has its own package because I was really keen to make this as reusable as possible for um, Draft.js users that don't use Draftail. Um, but otherwise it's all within Draftail and within Wagtail as well. Um, I'll just clean up my tabs a bit. Okay. This is my demo site for Draft.js Conductor, and I can quickly show the fix right there. So we have a text block at the top right there, and then an HR, and then another text block. And when you copy this, it should, of course, all make its way to the other editor. And that's what wasn't working before. Um, now it does work, um, at least in under most scenarios. So the code is on the left-hand side right there, and um, I kind of know already what I want to be doing right now. Um, so this stream compared to the previous one won't be me commenting existing code, it will be me uh, actually doing some coding, uh, hopefully. Um, so during the last stream, I think my connection is back for real this time around, um, and I'm not using my phone anymore, so it should work properly on Twitch as well. Um, yep, seems like Twitch got it. So I'll resume from where I was at, which is that um, last time I was doing some regexes on HTML, and um, yeah, it was a bad idea. I wasn't even sure how to make it work properly, and um, since then, this is what I worked on. Um, so using the DOM parser API from, from the browser, and it has this pass from string uh, method, you give it some HTML, and it gives you a document, like, um, like the document you'd have to manipulate uh, as a document object. So um, I can then um, use query selector to find the elements I was after, and then on those elements, use get attribute to get their value, and um, it's also quite convenient because then they are not um, HTML encoded anymore, the attributes. They, they just contain what they are meant to contain. Um, so in this case, a serialized JSON string. Um, so it's just much more re re reliable and um, yeah, much shorter as well, much easier to understand. Um, so it's, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, and now the next step um, for this, um, I think I submitted a whip pull request on on my project, and I think that I got a review from um, Pomax. Hi, hi, Pomax! If you're watching, oh, <laughs> thank you very much for looking at this. So, just a quick review to say, um, yeah, JSON dot pass um, could throw. So even if yeah, we don't expect it to throw because we control the content. There, there, there are scenarios where it could actually blow up if um, 
something not necessarily malicious happens. So for example, if the, the clipboard is altered in a way. Um, so yeah, it does seem like a good idea to handle that. Um, and that's what I'll be doing right now. Um, so uh, we want to wrap this in the try, try catch. And uh, I haven't written try catches in JS in a while. Because I generally try not to use those types of constructs for my code. Um, but in the case of JSON and pass, you don't control how it works. So um, this is the one and only way to handle errors with JSON that pass. So like that, yeah, I think I saw a proposal to make the catch variable binding optional, but right now it's still mandatory. So do this, JSON that pass. Maybe I'll um, extract the attribute retrieval separately, just so it's clear that the try catch is there just for JSON not pass and nothing else. And um, get attribute. So here I'm checking. Yeah, okay. Why did I call this row? This is like the worst name ever. Um, fragments else and then fragments else to get attribute. And then what can I call this? What's my fragments add to that address connector fragments? Um, yeah, so fragment at would be fine. And then I can check end fragment at and if it has no value, then all of this code pretty much doesn't need to run. And then JSON the pass of that. Um, and if I catch an error, I return early, I think that's the best um, best way to handle this and so I'll declare my raw content variable and if we do, if we catch an error while passing it as JSON um, then just stop the custom paste processing I think that seems seems like a good option um, I'll actually test this out properly um, later with unit tests and so on, but uh, for the stream I'll, I'll just change the code. Um, yes, so so yeah, here I'm using flow, flow type, flow from Facebook to check um, it's a static type checker for JavaScript, so here it's warning me that uh, get attributes might be missing if this is null, which is very true. Um, so I might want to check first that I do have the element, and then if I have the element, get its attributes, and otherwise. Um, Should I do is like do this like that? No, I'll change it again. I'll move that back inside of. I don't think it makes much semantic difference between checking that the element is there. Because the element I'm selecting it's based on the attributes and checking that the attribute is there, um, since yeah, the, this the same thing I'm checking in both cases. So I'll just move this inside the if, and it's one less useless operation to do um, in the case where the element is not there anyway. Um, yeah, and now I know it's defined because it's in the if right there, and flow 
doesn't complain about it anymore. Uh, and maybe add a comment about what's going on right there. Um, we want to handle if um, JSON passing fails. Um, we do. Uh, leave um, paste handling to draft JS. There is no reason for this to happen unless the clipboard was altered somehow. I don't know like what exactly would mess with the clipboard like that, but um, I know this can happen. For example, if you copy and paste something very long, there might be a limit to your clipboard size, and it might end right where it's not meant to. I think it might also fail at the HTML parsing step at the top right there, but well, better, better safe than sorry. Um, and I think that's the last change to this this handle draft editor pasted text uh, piece of code. Um, let's see if it still works quickly. Yeah, okay, all is fine. Um, so up next. I was wanting to check on what element best to declare my copy handler right there. Because uh, right now I'm using it, I'm attaching it on editor containers parent node for whatever reason. And I know I have a few other options. Um, so this is the ref to the editor. I have editor, I have editor container. And then I have the parent nodes of each of those. So editor container is right there, and editor, I think it would be, is it this one or that one? Okay, it's just the one within editor container. I think I can probably do this on that element because it's the one that has concentrated bolt set to true. So I can probably remove all of that and just do ref.editor here. Editor, editor, edit. Okay, let's see if that still works. So the thing is here, uh, we're competing against the draft.js um, on copy handler. So it's quite important to make sure that um, ours runs um, as we expect compared to the draft.js one. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to make a difference. Um, I think it's just, um, yeah, it just makes more sense to attach the event to the, the field you want. To, to directly to the, the most specific um, element rather than the parent of it that might be a bit less specific, even though it doesn't make a difference in how this works. Um, in this specific case, at least. So then we add the copy listener, which is the function defined above. And on unregister, we remove the listener. Okay. Well, that seems finished. Um, yeah, so the last step is to change that listener slightly. So there are a few things that I know are wrong in here. So the first one is um, we're attaching this fragment at attribute to wherever the copy happened with the content. And the at will be used to retrieve the content in the paste. And 
I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, if I do this multiple times, there might be cases where the attribute will still be there, and then there will be two attributes like that in the paste, um, and then you don't know which one to use. So I think I need to um, potentially remove all of the other attributes within um, within ref.editor. So let's see how I could do this. Um, maybe use the same variable name first. And then... Hmm. Yeah, I should only do this if there is a fragment to manage. Otherwise it's really useless. Because yeah, I think the copy fires on the specific block that's copied rather than on the whole editor. Um, so that's why I kind of just use event.target, the event target, sorry. Um, and then I, here I could do um, console.log this query selector all. Um, and check for my fragments at like I do in the paste. And I think that if I do two paste, two copies very fast, there will be some results right there, which is what I want to avoid. There is already some cleanup of the attributes over there, but I want to change that as well because it's not reliable enough. Um, so copy, no, att no, no attributes, which is perfect. Then if I do it, really, empty node list all the time. Hmm. Maybe I'm bit too optimistic with my speed. Maybe if I just make it slower. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was just too optimistic with my speed. Um, the idea is that if you paste once, twice, three times, four times, and so on, there will be multiple um, instances of this span element and that's bad. And here it's, it says only one, but I'm actually attaching another one right after, which means that once I've made my new attributes, then it will be two. So that's bad. So it should remove all of the references to that attribute um, before making a new one. Um, yeah, and I think it doesn't Technically, it only needs to remove the references for um, content that's inside of the selection range for the paste, for the copy. Um, but I don't think it makes any difference to do it for the whole editor every time. So I'll, I'll do that. Um, um, how did I call the result of this in here? Fragments else. Um, Fragments, fragments, adds like that, and I don't really like to work with the, the node list from query selector all. I'm, I'd much rather work with an array, so I'll use this array magic, calling um, array slice on the node list to get an array and not a node list. And now I should be able to do fragment else dot for each. Um, and I can, yeah, if it was a node list, I wouldn't be able to call any array methods on it. 
um, I could use a for loop, but I really don't like to use for loops in general. I, they, they convey a bit less meaning than um, the array iterator methods. Um, and then else.remove attributes, that's like that. I think that's it. Okay. And I think it will prevent my issue. Tests, 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 copy, copy. Oh, I remove the console log. Um, so I log it um, twice. So before and after the removal. Um, I'm not sure if it's worth it, but just to make sure I understand, I understand how it works. Okay. One, two, yes. Okay, it's still there. <laughs> what have I done wrong? So it makes sense for it to be there before. Oh no, it's because I'm logging the same thing again. So what I need to log is actually the result of um, this, not my variable. Okay. Yeah, so that's a good example. So here it was there before and not there after. So that's exactly what I want. Um, so this is, it's very important to remove the attribute for that reason. And the set timeout, um, why, why did I do that initially? I think the idea was I don't really like to pollute the, the HTML that React manages with some that attributes coming from my code. This is probably a very, very bad idea, even though it's the only one I, I can find to make this work in that specific case. Um, so that's why I had it in a set timeout, just to so it cleans it, cleans it up after the copy is handled. Um, it would be better if there was a way to say, um, like some sort of hook or event, that's called after a copy or whatever, but um, I don't think there is such a thing. So, hence the set timeout. Um, and now that we are removing the attributes here in subsequent copies, it feels pretty safe to do this uh, after one second. Um, yeah. So, I'll just add a bit of other comments about this. Um, clean up existing fragment at it's important um, that the paste content only contains one such attribute. Okay, so that seems quite bulletproof to me. Um, so I think the only thing I need to change right now is this, this set timeout right there. Um, so whether it's necessary or not, I think, I don't think it matters that much to React. Um, I think it will just discard attributes that it doesn't know about. Um, but still, like I would, I would rather be on the safe side. I tried to look this up, like whether what React thinks of 
um, unknown attributes within the, the DOM that it handles and I couldn't couldn't get much um, information uh, I don't know if I googled for the wrong thing or, or what but didn't find any any relevant information so I think the idea is just um, since we control these attributes we don't want it to be um, causing any snow any slowness on the DOM because it can be quite a big, big attribute and we also don't want um, React to handle it differently because it has these attributes. Um, I think I, I know quite well how React works under the hood, and I wouldn't expect this to be a problem. But in that in this specific scenario, we are actually using React within Content Editable. Um, that's what Draft.js does, and I'm a bit worried that uh, it will cause some issues for Draft.js. Um, So all that matters is that we do the cleanup after the paste has the copy has happened, um, the event has finished being handled, and that um, we don't make it crash. So I think we might need to check that this is still a thing. Um, because if the element isn't there anymore on the page, then it's a bad idea to, pro to probably to reuse it and remove attribute fragment that. So let's see. So let's see what happens, for example, if I copy this and then remove the whole editor's content. Nothing happens. Okay, great. When I write code, I don't like, I try not to write code that's overly defensive because then it breaks your understanding of what's actually likely to fail. Um, but at the same time, this seems like a good place to do it. Okay, so after a second it loads, it, it shows the element that got clean, cleaned up. Um, and maybe, if, can we reveal an elements panel? Yep. Yeah, so we see the attribute being set and then we see it being unset, which is perfect. And then what happens if I do this and quickly remove it. Okay, it still has a reference to it. So even though the attribute isn't there anymore, the element isn't there anymore, it doesn't bother Draft.js too much. No, I'm sorry, not Draft.js, the browser. Um, that's because, yeah, okay, it was still defined. Okay, it was still defined, so I think this is fine. Um, we might not need this if... I'll just try one more time with a much longer cleanup time, even though I know the copy event won't take that long in the real world, it's just to make sure that I understand how this is working. So copy and then I remove everything. Yeah, okay, it's still there, so no need for the if. Mm, um, and then I should comment that what is going on here. Clean up. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Clean up attributes from React Storm. Um, <coughs> I 
after the copy has happened. And for timeout, um, we could use 100 milliseconds, doesn't sound so bad. The consequence, if, um, let's say one second, the consequence if this fails to happen is that simply that um, <coughs> there'll be an, an attribute on the HTML that React doesn't know what to do with. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I'll check again. Um, if I can find any documentation on this and um, decide on whether this is necessary at all or not based on that. Um, and I think I'll probably stop here for today um, simply because I need to do more testing but it will take a lot of time so yeah okay yeah so I'll stop here for today um, again this is something that was initially part of my um, Patreon. So in my Patreon, I try to set up some monthly goals for, for myself, just like what I want to be doing this month. And when I say I, well, I just suggest ideas, but then people actually get to vote, people who support me get to vote on what I should be doing. And I, I think my supporters know quite well what I specialize in and what I do with Wagtail and, and Draft.js. So they are in a great place to tell me what they think would be uh, good to do next, what, what's a priority. And so the copy-paste improvements is, is that thing. Um, was quite popular. Um, and this is an issue, it's I mean, an ongoing issue for, forever with any, any Draft.js editor. Um, but it, it got put to, it got um, raised nicely by, by Pomax. Um, who has, uh, by, by the way, raised a lot of very interesting issues for Wagtail. Um, um, so I, I took some time to explain why it wasn't working <laughs> and um, how I could see it work. Um, and went with a different approach in the end, but yeah, um, did a whip pull request with my, my fix and then put another pull request in my separate project. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it will make it to Wagtail in the next release. Um, what I have to do the next for this is um, I'm going to make a shortlist. So step one, um, actually write the shortlist down. Uh, the shortlist, not shortlist, to-do list. Um, so one, determine if um, the attribute cleanup after copy is necessary. Two tests. So I, I test this in all browsers that Wagtail supports. Um, and I'll try to test this in a few different code conditions. So different um, pages, different operating systems and so on, because this is quite quite sensitive um, code. Um, I also know that if the, the, there is one good thing about this code, which is that if it fails, the fallback is to defer to DraftJS's default behavior, which already does a lot. So if it if the code does fail for whatever reason, um, it won't be a big deal from the end user's perspective. But it also means that if there are bugs in here, they'll be quite hard to find because people will have to do this in a case where it fails, and also in a case where DraftJS and my implementation work differently. Um, so not not the easiest to pinpoint. Um, so tests, uh, documentation for this new API, um, release of Draft.js conductor, then I'll need to um, integrate into Draft.tail, and release of Draft.tail, it's a whole Russian dolls of NPM modules. Um, yeah, I mean, test in Draft.tail, of course. Oh yeah, I didn't mention unit tests. Unit tests. And unit tests in Draft.tail as well. Um, 
yeah, and then pull request to Wacker to upgrade to the latest version of the editor. That should be the, the easy part. <laughs> it would be a very, very small pull request for something that took so much time. <laughs> um, and I think it would be a good occasion as well to release the, the 1.0 of Drafttail because um, so let's just look quickly at the issue tracker together. If we look at the milestones first, uh, 1.0 is nearly complete. So I, I decide what's what's with the milestone, of course. But um, there are, there are two things left, which is the release issue and this copy paste behavior. Um, there are other issues I'm aware of with Drafttail and with Draft.js, but I decided that they weren't uh, big enough to prevent us from using Drafttail and or Draft.js um, as much as we want. So the, the specific issues that I still find uh, quite annoying is the, the mobile support for Android. Um, I'm following the issues on Draft.js repository, but uh, yeah, I, I know there are many um, then there is some text drag and drop issues that I think that's um, because of content editable, not really because of Draft.js. I don't know if there is anything they can do about it, but uh, yeah, we have to do something about this. And there's already an issue raised by, by Bertrand on Wagtail's um, issue tracker. Um, that might be the next one I look at after the copy paste. And then, yeah, uh, many more issues. <laughs> Uh, most of them quite inconsequential, um, but yeah, I guess that depends who you ask. <laughs> uh, but the copy paste really is the one that I, I found the most annoying because um, it's there whenever you use two editors on the page, which if you use a CMS, that's that's very common. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully. I'll be able to do this before the end of the month. Um, the idea with my Patreon is that we set goals for every month, so it would be nice. I, I don't necessarily think I need to finish everything by the end of each month, but it would be nice if I did just to show show some progress. Um, and maybe, yeah, maybe I'll try to do some of the later uh, stages of this, like the pull requests to Wagtail in particular, um, whilst while streaming, because um, that's something that people don't do often, I think, um, making pull requests to Wagtail. So it could be interesting for them to see that it's not that complicated if you know how to do it. Uh, of course, the first few times will take a while, but it, it's it's quite quite easy um, once you get used to it. Um, and yeah, just give some tips about that as well. Um, but yeah, for today, that will be it. Um, I hope you liked this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope. Um, let me not tell you all the whole backstory of this code. Still, still made sense to follow me along with my changes. Um, and yeah, see you around for the next stream. Um, have a nice afternoon.